Parking, searching for the good life in the city. In the 1920s, cars started taking up more city space. Streets became clogged and people got squeezed out. In an attempt to make it better for city dwellers, cities began requiring a certain amount of off-street parking spaces in new buildings, believing that it would clear up the chaos in the street, but not realizing the long-term consequences. <laughs> Was the problem solved with new building regulations? Cars had a lot more space to park. But getting to those spaces was getting trickier and trickier, and providing more parking did nothing to alleviate congestion. The city was being turned over to the car. In many cases, cars get more space than people. The average parking space is 300 square feet, about the same size as a studio apartment. This space can instead fit 10 bikes, 5 motorbikes, or 2 rickshaws. A car requires 2 to 5 spaces a day, one at home and another wherever you drive, to school, to work, the grocery store, etc, etc. Building parking is not cheap. The average cost to build one parking space is $40,000, and that cost eventually trickles down to you. The assumption that everyone wants to and can drive is not true. In the U.S. and Europe, young people are driving less than previous generations. People today don't want more parking. They want more walkable cities. All this parking infrastructure is required by law and follows an outdated U.S.-based parking manual that was developed with a suburban focus. It has no scientific basis. In Mexico City, the Torre Bancomer had to build 3,000 parking spaces even though there's a metro right across the street. These parking requirements make using a private car convenient since people don't even need to leave their building to get in their car. Ultimately, this makes it more difficult to sway people to take transit. As parking overwhelmed cities, people's lives suffered. Cities became more sprawling, air became more polluted, and walking around the city became harder. Sidewalks were disrupted by driveways. In the U.S., over 200 people die and over 17,000 are injured each year by people backing out of a parking space. Nearly half of those deaths are children. In some cities like Beijing, setbacks are used to fulfill parking requirements in the vacant space around buildings, which allows cars to cut through the sacred space of the sidewalk. Setbacks with compound walls create desolate, unsafe public spaces, attracting crime and killing life on the street. The very thing that cities were trying to improve, life for its residents, led to a more hostile environment for pedestrians. Beginning in the 1960s and 70s, cities in the US and Europe started to shift away from that outdated thinking of parking as a solution. Central St. Giles is a mixed-use, mixed-income project in central London with over 100 residences and 400,000 square feet of office space. It has only 30 parking spaces. Most of these are used for bike parking and disabled access. Paris set maximums near transit and managed to get more people out of their cars. Hamburg, Germany and Nashville, Tennessee require ground floor retail wrapped around parking garages to promote walking, framing public space through better urban design. Mexico City and Sao Paulo are working to follow these other cities, starting with on-street parking reforms. There are many daunting challenges ahead for reforming parking policies worldwide, but if we're successful, cities will be more competitive, convenient, safe, and the cost of housing will be lowered. We can all rediscover the good life in the city. Thank you.